I'm running out of time, every day goes by so fast And every moment counts, baby, I don't wanna miss a thing We can sleep under the stars, we can sleep under the stars or hang out in the Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Now what happens if you've got a BMW X4? Get some parts from the M5. Put the engine of the brand new M3 and M4 into a car. You've got this. Welcome to the brand new X4M competition. Let's get going out on the road. So we've got a lovely red start button. We put it in drive. Let's have a chat about this car. Now, I've got a simple question I want to ask. What is the point of this car? It is a large vehicle with a sporty engine. I've got this car for the next couple of days, thanks to BMW Chandler's in Halsham. And I want to find out what this car is all about. On a personal note, I'm also very excited. This is my first ever M car. So let's get going. We'll have a chat about everything exciting on this car because at the end of the day, an M car of any description is all about the driving experience. So first of all, let's talk about the brand new S58 engine we've got up front. The engine is incredibly important for the company. It's actually going to be in the new M3 and M4 next year. So it has to be good. And being in this car, it should give me an idea of what it's like, possibly, for next year. So I found a nice bypass. We can stretch its thing's legs ever so slightly. We're going to press my M2 button, so everything has gone into its most aggressive settings. We'll talk about these M buttons a bit later on. And we'll put our foot down. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that that is far, that is that outrageous. Oh I need to be careful. This that is fast, that is so fast. But what's making it so quick? Well up front, as I said, S58, it's a brand spanking new engine, three litre inline six with twin single scroll turbos. Now in the competition model that I'm in, we've got 510 brake horsepower, 600 newton meters of torque, and according to BMW, this thing will do 60 in 4.1 seconds. 4.1, that is, that's bonkers. We've got a two ton SAC that is, well, it's supercar quick. I still can't get over how quick it is, but it is an M car at the end of the day. So let's go over to my other preset. So we'll have the car in a bit more of a, a relaxed, mood so we've got the engine throttle response and noise uh, efficient yes I'm sorry about that it's just dumbed it down slightly comfortable uh, dampers and sort of a, a lot lighter steering wheel just give me a chance to have a quick chat about these M1 and M2 buttons that are on this brand new steering wheel steering wheel itself while we're there it's 
identical to the one on the M5. And we've got the usual buttons you'd find on pretty much any BMW you've driven over the past few years. I've been very, very lucky and driven a number of new BMWs, so I feel right at home. It's got the, the usual buttons. The thing I haven't had before is the M1 and M2 buttons at the top here. That allows you to put in some presets of how you want this car to behave. So for example, if I press M1, I can change the settings on the infotainment system. So we go to M setup and we'll have a look under configure M1. In here, we've got DSC, so you can either have that on, off, or in something called an MDM mode, and that allows, it's an in-between, so it allows a bit of slip, gives a bit more to the driver. So I've got it in that mode. It's wet and horrible, and I don't really want to turn it off in these conditions. If you do turn it off, on the other hand, something that is also unique to this car is something called MX Drive. And that allows you to have the car being rear biased, very much like the M5. So even though it's a four wheel drive car, you can make it feel very much like a rear wheel drive car. So you get all that excitement with a slight safety net to catch you if you're hurtling towards a hedge. Superb. The only difference between this and the M5 and the M8 is you can make it completely rear wheel drive. It's a big old car, this, at two tonnes. So in some ways I'm quite pleased it hasn't got that. Engine mode as well, you can have that in three different modes. Well, any of these, Sport Plus, Sport and Efficient. Chassis as well, it's got uh, electronic uh, dampers so you can make it extra firm, firm or Mm, no, in fact, all of them are pretty firm. It is an M car at the end of the day, so I would expect that. Possibly I wish there was a, an extra soft mode because driving around for a while, it can get a bit, a bit bumpy on these British roads. We love a good pothole over in the UK. I don't know what it's like for the rest of you guys around the world, but UK roads are not great as a general rule. Steering, we've gone back to the settings now, steering again, Sport, Comfort or Sports Plus. We've got the transmission, so how ferocious you want it to change and the head-up display, so we can have a standard view or the M view. The M view gives you a, an ever so slightly more exciting look on the the windscreen in front of me on the head-up display at the moment i've got that mode on and we've got a very large rev counter speed in the middle the speed you should be going and the gear you're in now having the speed you should be going at is very useful that speedo goes up ridiculously quickly you have to be so careful. It is such a fast car. And being so big as well, you don't really notice it. You look down and you think, oh, I'm doing 30 miles an hour and you're doing 60. Put your foot down at 50 and you get very quickly up to 60 or 70 miles an hour. Yeah, it's a bit of an animal, but very, very exciting at the same time. So let's drop this down. I'll give you an example of how quick this thing is. So we're going to go down to, so we're in third gear, 40 miles an hour, plant it, 60, there we go. That was it, that's all it takes. So another second in the throttle, you're going over 70, probably three seconds you've lost your license. So yeah, outrageous, fun, but just be careful with this thing. Uh, so that's the settings. We've gone full circle here between the M1 and M2 buttons. If you do want to tweak it ever so slightly, down by the gear shifter, you have got some 
tweaks you can make. So again, the settings I talked about on the infotainment system, you could just change them ever so slightly without having to go into the full M preset. So let's have a chat about the handling of this car. I'd expect it to be very good. Again, it is an M car and they've had to do some tuning to say the least to, to keep this beast under control with all this extra power you do need some clever tech going on to make sure it doesn't feel like a, a wallowy boat when you're going round corners BMW have put the it's got an M diff so it can split power between the front axle and the rear and also the rear left and right wheels the chassis is very firm it's been stiffened up considerably. We've got a strut brace running through the front engine bay. Got the dampers, which are a lot firmer. The car itself is a lot firmer than standard. Almost too firm at times. We've got the X M drive. Just the whole package is very, very good. I found some nice twisty roads again so we can see how it does handle. I need to be very careful. It's rained a lot. There's mud from tractors. It's autumn so there's leaves everywhere. But we should be able to see what this car's sort of like more than anything. So I've put it in its most aggressive settings using my M1 button. So everything is in angry, stiff, throttle response mode. Very, very stiff with these roads. We've got MDM mode, so it will allow a slight bit of slip. It's sort of got the traction control, everything in a halfway house. And <laughs> yeah, this, this handles so well. There is very little slip it feels very very solid round the corners you can roll it in with <laughs> a lot of speed and I think if you were in a normal X4 this thing would have slid off into one of these many hedges around here they might handle well but this thing Now the X4 is not a new car. So BMW M division have taken the basics of that and breathed some excitement and tuning into it. But that does mean you do not get the latest tech in the car. Don't get me wrong, it's still a very, very good car. But iDrive in this, we're actually on iDrive version 7, but this uses iDrive version six the pro package and you don't get all of the features that you would do in the newest model so you don't get gesture control you don't get the same voice control the layout of the dials is a bit different but the biggest difference has to be the instruments in front of me now on the new model it's completely different to this they're sort of lots of hexagonal type shapes just everything is different this one feels more, it looks more analogue, more traditional of what you'd expect to see on a BMW. But I do like it. It is very clearly laid out. We've got speedo, as you'd expect, rev counter on the right, an X4M badge in the middle. And the thing I really like about this is the settings I was talking about earlier, the tuning, so the, the way it handles, you get some icons at the top and you can press the buttons down by the gear shifter and then scroll through so you can see exactly what settings you're in which is really useful. So going over to the main infotainment system, it is touchscreen like most of the modern uh, infotainment systems. You've got the traditional and rather lovely 
iDrive controller to the left of the gear stick so you can scroll through shortcut keys to things like menu, map, settings. Very, very easy to use. So you can actually swipe across, touch to go into some things. So even though this is a performance car, BMW have not scrimped on the creature comforts. Over in the centre console here, you've got the controls for your stereo, the climate control, the heated and vented seats. Your bottom is very well looked after in this car. And that's about it really. There's not a lot going on. The things that you want to change regularly are just, just at hand over here. They've done a very good job at doing that. A bit further down we've got a cubby hole with a fancy sliding drawer, an X4 competition badge. And in this cubby hole you've got a wireless charging, a USB port, two cup holders, 12 volt power supply, and that's, that's about it. Let's have a chat about the general quality of this cabin. For £80,000 upwards, you expect this car to have no cheap materials whatsoever. And I'm pleased to report I've not found any. The seats have got this lovely Monaro leather. The option I would go for and I've seen is the two-tone colours so you can have this central section of the seat in a contrasting colour and that does brighten up the cabin very nicely. Got leather on the dash, on the door cards. Being the competition as well we've got bits of carbon fibre, we've got them on the door, on this central section, down by the gear selector. So it feels a quality place. The steering wheel is well, it's lovely, it's leather, no Alcantara, which I possibly would have liked. Um, got the M stitching. It's just a very, very nice place to be. Even down by my feet here, you've got, got leather. So they certainly haven't scrimped at all. It's just a very nice place to be. It's a bit of an unusual beast, this one, having Having a large SUV, well, it's actually an SAC, a sports activity coupe. So you've got the high driving position, you sort of look quite a long way down the road. There's quite a lot of room, maybe not as much room in the back as I was expecting. I did fit a couple of adults in the back, and my seat was all the way back, but a big button I was very surprised there wasn't a huge amount of leg room for the person sitting behind my seat so I asked at the beginning of the video who on earth would get this car why would you get this car what is it all about and I have found this car as an M car is so fast it is outrageous how quickly this thing gets to 60 and when you're traveling you put your foot down and it just pulls like an absolute train. Handling defies physics. I do not know how a two-ton car handles this well and doesn't slide off the road. So as an M, really, really good. And being an SUV, or in this case an SAC, you've got more of a commanding view. The looks of the car as well are slightly different. You certainly going to stand out if you own one of these cars so I think if you want a car that says look at me I'm slightly different and you want it to be fast then this is the perfect car for you I'm gonna now call this video to a close I've still got a few hours of fun I can have in it before I give it back to Chandler's BMW and Housham hopefully you guys have enjoyed the experience of my first ever M car. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a thumbs down. Comments are always welcome and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching.